Good morning, folks, and welcome to Swing Trading Today. This is Bob Desmond. It is at current 5.39 in the a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let's get to the pre-market activity. The S&P futures hammered. The president apparently announced a new round of tariffs last night. Whether it's rhetoric, whether it's rule, I'm not sure yet. But the floor has certainly been taken out from under the S&P 500. At current, we are down 1.14%. Now, while yesterday we saw a rebound, let's go to a daily chart really quick. We saw a rebound off the lows of the day. We were able to manage to recapture the lower band of support. This morning, we have taken out the lows of yesterday, and now we are trading down below the 20-period moving average. Now, I reluctantly put on a short position of the S&P 500 yesterday, so we're positioned well moving into the open, but more than likely, I'm going to put out an advanced order booking profits on that trade because I don't believe that we're not going to get a rally back and attempt to try to take out or recapture this prior support level. You know, we, d- we did try to do so yesterday because technically we broke down below that support level right here. We bounced around, tried to recapture and failed, but... That's really ticky-tack trade. We would want to see a measurable uh, rally back on a daily basis to get that feel for either a breakout or a double top, and then we'll watch for a breakdown. And then the path of least resistance would change if we do break down to new lower lows after putting in lower highs to the downside. So... uh, A lot happening here. Members, check out last night's commentary, and we will do another market wrap tonight, touching upon the events of the day. Let's take a look at the volatility index ripping. Ripping really strong this morning. Again, four-hour chart. We have broken out of this base. You could see here, we had a very tight consolidation on the VIX, lower band of support here, upper band of resistance. We broke out right here on the 14th. Think about that, the 14th. Today's the 19th. The VIX was breaking out. It didn't take off, but it consolidated gains and retested the breakout point and now is subsequently breaking out of the base. So it really pays to pay attention to your four-hour charts. Taking a look at the Dow futures. Wow. Obviously, new daily lows on this four-hour chart. And we have broken down below the lows of the 5th of June, which was actually a resistance level back here on the 30th of May. So if we open up down here, that's a pretty significant breakdown. But again, I'm not quite convinced that we're not going to get an attempted rally back in the next day or so. Now, what I think to be the two more interesting trades are the NASDAQ, which has been strong. And then we're going to talk about gold. Now, the NASDAQ, while down, it's not down as much as the Dow Jones. Remember, folks, these trade wars are going to impact the largest companies the most. The S&P 500 large caps, the Dow names. That's why they're taking it on the chin. That's why you're seeing the small and micro caps rally to new all-time highs. They did so as recently as yesterday. But it looks as though the NASDAQ is beginning to succumb here. New daily low. We are off the lows of the session. That should be pointed out. Let's take a look at gold. All right, so interesting events here with gold. And the interesting event is this, is that gold rallied along with the U.S. dollar the day that the ECB gave their dovish interest rate forecast. They said they were going to end QE. It was supposed to be a hawkish statement. Until, of course, they said uh, we will end it in about a year. And both the dollar and 
gold rallied. Here you have it. Take a look at the dollar. Here's the rally. Now, on Friday, gold just got crushed. Simply crushed. We traded down below the not only the 1300 level, the 1290 level, which is real serious critical support, now resistance. But as we open up the morning today, you could see that gold has broken out some. We have a double bottom setup forming here. We broke out above support. We are pulling back off the highs of the session because the dollar has broken out. I spoke about this last night with members. When I spoke with members last night, the dollar had broken down below this lower band of support and closed there. But the longs came in, squeezed the shorts, pushing the dollar higher, and we now have a breakout. Now, the odd part is, is that, again, we have gold trading up about a dollar eighty per contract along with the US dollar which normally doesn't happen it happened last Thursday it's happening today are we beginning to see the makings of a trend Friday's price action certainly put a wet blanket on that thesis but let's remember that they have a tendency to blow out stops and create a head fake on commodities before they rip them back up higher it's not just commodities on stocks as well but in particular commodities because they're so volatile they blow out the stop loss orders and then the longs come in and they buy up the contracts taking the position to the long side now i'm not saying we're there yet it's just a thesis but if we close back above 1290 to 1300 that thesis becomes a pretty sound one especially if the U.S. dollar is rallying. Why would they rally together? As I mentioned to members the other day, if you have inflation over in the Eurozone at 1.9% and their target is 2%, and their largest economy being Germany has inflation at 2.2%, which is in excess of the target of the ECB, and Mario Draghi's coming out and saying he can't end QE for another year, what is wrong with the eurozone and the chart i love to point out is the chart of deutsche bank deutsche bank the largest bank in europe is getting this is a weekly chart is getting crushed you want an even worse picture this is a monthly chart take a look at where we're trading now on deutsche bank relative to where we were at the depths of the financial crisis we are below that level and once you see Deutsche Bank break down into the single digits you're gonna hear a lot of conversation about what's going on over at Deutsche Bank I think their banking system over in Europe has a lot of problems so if you want to know why the dollar and gold are up today and why they were up last Thursday Take, take into consideration that you have inflation over the Eurozone that for all intents and purposes has met expectations, yet they can't raise rates for another year. What is wrong with that picture? Not to mention the emerging markets. Let's get to member stock chart requests. We'll kick things off with Bitcoin for Allen. Bitcoin broke out of this downtrend channel. This is a four-hour chart. Let's go to a daily chart. Okay, so on this daily chart, we have a downtrend channel. And we bottomed off of it on the 13th. We are now resting right at the upper band of that range at 67.10. Now, you can't buy Bitcoin right now. When you, would you want to buy Bitcoin? You'd want to buy Bitcoin on a pullback and a higher low versus the low of the 13th. Ideally, you wait until you get the breakout above this upper band of resistance and it close above that level. Now, when would you add more? We have another resistance level right up here at 71.91. You'd look to buy on a rally and it close above that level. That sets the stage for a rally up to, let's call it 85.45. So a nice run from where we sit at present. But right now we need to make sure that this breakout is for real what does it take to make sure that breakouts for real well we need to stop going down right so to stop going down that means we need to go up 
and clear resistance level. So Bitcoin is in show me mode. It has to show us that it has the ability to gather strength and do what it's supposed to do when the global monetary system is becoming tumultuous. It should rally. The emerging markets are declining. They are very weak and getting weaker, yet Bitcoin can't rally. What's wrong there? So we need strength on Bitcoin. We need to clear resistance. That's how I would play it. Let's get to a couple of other names. Okay, let's continue. Member stock chart request off with Cypress Semiconductor weekly chart. Uh, I'm concerned about Cypress. The reason is this, is that while we've had a strong rally off of the April lows, we have seen RSI in a downtrend where it should be moving higher, confirming the strength on Cyprus. It's not. It's weak and getting weaker. So that doesn't bode well for a stock that's at a very, very critical resistance level. 1790 takes us up to 1875. If we close above 1790, my guess is we will challenge 1875. If we get through it, I'm all good with buying Cyprus, especially if we break out above this upper band of resistance on a weekly basis. Right now, though, I'd sit on my hands, watch, and wait. Because if we break down below this lower band of support here, big problems for Cyprus. That would be a double top. And if we break down below the lows of April, that would be a confirmation breakdown. That would set the stage for a bear market in Cyprus. So I would wait to see whether or not we can gather the strength to break out. I would buy the breakout. I want to buy the strength. I'm too concerned about this market right now. I don't like RSI at all. It is sending us a signal. And if we ignore this signal that the market is sending us, if we lose money, we can't blame, pardon my voice, we can't blame the markets for being rigged this, speculators screwed me that. No, we didn't pay attention to the charts. It's our fault. Own it. Daily chart. Yesterday, we had a breakout point failure, meaning we broke out above resistance on Friday and we gave up that support level yesterday. It is now resistance yet again. And that resistance level, let's call it 1775. We'll probably come down and retest this lower band of support. Rolling over on Stoke RSI. Volume was light yesterday to the downside, which is good. I would avoid these shares until we could start closing above resistance levels. It's had a nice run from April. Let's see whether or not this is all it's got. Can it muster the strength to break out? eBay. I'm not loving this chart at all. Big concerns here with eBay. Now, I just spoke about RSI about on Cypress Semiconductor, so let's start off with the positive here. Cypress Semiconductor was showing lower highs and lower lows on RSI. Now, with eBay, we broke out the week of May the 29th or June the 4th, one of the two, and we we're pulling back and retesting. Now, we have an indicator that may be leading price performance. So this is a signal by the market that, we, you know what, we better keep an eye on eBay because while the price is looking fairly weak, there's cause to keep an eye on it because we may just move up higher here. Now, let's take away the RSI and just go by price and volume. Would I buy these shares? No way. Lower highs and lower lows is not the direction you want to buy a stock in. You want higher lows and higher highs. Why fight the trend? I may be a contrarian, but that is one rule of thumb that can't fail you. So I would watch for a breakout above $40 per share, especially to $41 per share. We had resistance at $40.86 for two weeks in a row. If we can close above that level, I'd be fairly confident that with RSI at our back, that we rally up to prior highs and at least attempt to take out those prior highs. So eBay is a watch stock right now. I wouldn't short it. I wouldn't buy it either. Daily chart. 
Uh, we're in no man's land. We are in a triangle formation. The trading range is very wide right now. I wouldn't buy this stock. It's trading down below. It's 50 and 200 day moving average. N nothing going on here that makes it attractive. Volume is above average to the downside. I would avoid. Twitter, weekly chart. A powerful move higher here. It's extended. We do not have a new weekly high yet, and we have a ton of resistance back here from April of 14 to September of 14 to March of 15. We need to get a pullback, a nice consolidation. I would buy the breakout. I would add more on a rally up and through. Resistance at, let's call it 47.79, then at 53.49, then at 55.99 so on and so forth a beautiful base here but we've had a nice run let's see whether or not on a pullback we can break out and then begin to gain steam and break out above the mid mid 50 range longer term i think the shares are buy i love the chart daily chart a uh, nice bullish key reversal yesterday after flashing a bearish key reversal on friday we're a bit over bought here that does not mean it can't go higher. But with the markets under pressure today, I would be very careful about putting on what I would deem to be a speculative position right now because you're not buying Twitter on a break out of a sound base. And if you're going to buy it today, despite what I say, I would use a stop right below yesterday's lows because that's where the market told us we had some support right here. And it acted as resistance on the 12th, and then again on the 13th. That's it for this morning, folks. Members, I will speak to you this evening on Market Wrap. I'll be in the forum later on. If you have any questions, everybody have a profitable trading day and be well.